Hello. How are you guys doing this evening? I just left Alex's Christmas party, which went very, very long. Um, we got there at five, and then, um, well, it was actually like two different parts of a Christmas party, but anyway, the same Christmas party. So we got there at five, and we just left. And um, <clears throat> he is going out with a couple people, and I was like, I'm gonna go get a fountain pop with Tanya. <laughs> so it was fun, we had a good time. I wore this turtleneck that I got today. It's like, it's navy blue turtleneck sweater. And then I got a new pair of jeans that are like really dark. And then I got them with those ASOS shoes. Um, not the loafers, but the other ones that um, are kind of like really high soles. And Alex got some new stuff to wear too. And we had a good time. It was really fun. And, um, but I will tell you that... <laughs> I did not stick to my diet tonight. So I don't know how I'm gonna do this because we of course go to brunch on Sundays. So I don't know if it's kind of like two brunch, two uh, cheat meals, a day and a half together, I don't know. Um, but then I will watch what I eat. I'll probably have brunch tomorrow and then I won't eat the rest of the day and really watch what I eat on Monday. But we got to the beginning part of it um, and it was like just like 10 of us and they had edamame hummus, which was absolutely delicious. Wasabi peas, which are like my all-time favorite. I love wasabi peas. Olives, and other oh, olives were so good. And then they had, um, oh, it was some kind of like whipped cheese in these little dishes. It was delicious. It was that we went to Divi and Carmel, and um, which is like a tapas restaurant, but we didn't really eat there. And then at the party party we went, they had like a buffet, but it was all meat stuff. So I got like three little pieces of margar. I mean, I didn't eat horrible. I didn't go like, you know, all in or anything like that. But I had like three little pieces of margarita pizza. And then I had like three of those pretzel ball things. You guys know what I'm talking about? They're like, they look like, uh, um, like rolls, but they're pretzels. And then you dip them in like this garlic sauce. Yeah, that was not the healthy part, so. But I didn't go all in and I hadn't eaten anything else today. So, well, I had like four pieces of this Cracker Jack stuff that I reviewed from my review channel and that was about it, so. But the party was a lot of fun. Got to see a lot of people I hadn't seen since last year. And um, it was a fun time, so. I knew that they would want to go out afterwards because they, you know, they kind of like make that night last and stuff and that's cool. So I'm going to get a fountain pop with Tanya and then I'm going to vlog for a little bit. I might go home, let the dogs out and then um, finish up vlogging a little bit more. It's really warm in Indianapolis today. It is 58 degrees right now. It was like in the 60s all day today. It was really warm. And, um, Got up, got my coffee. My husband's coffee is right here. He got a latte. And, um, which he never gets a latte, it's weird. And I usually gets iced tea, or if we go to like Patashu or something, he'll just get like black coffee, but he got a latte today. And then we went shopping to get some stuff, and um, like outfits for tonight. And what else did we do? I filmed a review video but I did it in my car. And then when I got home, I filmed a video for my Peter Mon channel. And I didn't even get out of the house until like after one and we had to be at the party at five. So I got a lot done in like three and a half, four hours. We had a good time, it was fun. It was fun. It seems so weird though, like already, going to Christmas parties. Like, I mean, it's the, it's the first of December today, you know? And it just seems so weird to me. It doesn't seem like that I should be at a Christmas party, if that makes sense. Like, I don't know, it just seems weird. If that makes sense to anybody, like, I feel like Christmas parties should be like the 15th on. And, um, I said something to Alex on the way there. He's like, yeah, well, they you know, like to have a Christmas party early because everybody else has got other stuff the rest of the month. It has been raining all day in Indianapolis, and I have had a horrible, horrible migraine all day today because of it. It's been killing me. And, um, yeah, so that's been about it. 
tomorrow we have we'll go to brunch and then we and then I have my um, book club live stream at four o'clock and that's about it tomorrow probably film some videos get those up I don't know what else I do not know what else just relax probably just a day of relaxation a day of relaxation like a spa day but at home I was like those clouds are so pretty well maybe they are the clouds I thought then it was my window but it is the clouds no it is the clouds outside it's not very late it's only like 11 something 10 50 so I'm gonna get Tanya and we're gonna get a fountain pop and she said she can't stay out too late because she probably has to work early in the morning, so I'm gonna get off here and pull it into her neighborhood, and then I will be back in just a little while. Bye. Okay, I'm leaving Tanya's. We both got Diet Cokes. I got a can, she got a bottle. I'm like really tired tonight. I don't know what happened. I. I, maybe it was eating that stuff. I don't know, but I got like real, I was telling Tanya, she goes, well, just go home and go to sleep. And I said, well, I still want to do my vlog. And I was like, I don't know if I want to go home and change and then vlog, or if I want to vlog now and then go home. I don't know what I want to do. So I think I'm gonna vlog for a little bit and we'll see. Christmas parties are fun, aren't they? But then I get like all Christmassy and it's like, it's kind of warm in this car. But then I get so Christmassy and it's like Christmas isn't gonna happen for another three and a half weeks, you know what I mean? Alex's brother comes home from San Diego this week though. He comes home Wednesday and he's here, I think until Monday, Alex said. And his birthday is this week, so we're gonna celebrate his birthday with him, which is exciting. And I haven't seen him in a year excited about seeing him. They wanted to come home at Christmas time, but they only get so much work off because uh, they both of them just started new jobs. And uh, I guess it's also like super expensive to come from San Diego to Indianapolis at Christmas time. Um, so he's coming home for the week of his birthday instead. His mom's really excited to see him. There's a plane in the sky. I mean an alien. <laughs> oh. I can't believe it's so warm outside and I don't know why I have the heat on when it is. I guess I could just turn the heat off completely, couldn't I? so nice for these little holiday parties and then you know, they give awards and all that kind of stuff. We have like one more work party for him. Um, but that'll be more of like a sit down dinner probably. Which will be fun. I guess I could just save this outfit and wear it then too. My kind of not really so dressy but kind of, kind of dressy. Holiday outfit. I haven't worn a turtleneck in a couple years. And um, I saw these, it's Calvin Klein. Is it Calvin Klein or is it Ralph Lauren? I don't know, but I got it at Macy's. And um, it was on, I think I got it at Macy's. I didn't, yeah, I think I got it at Macy's. Cause I was trying on jackets at Nordstrom Rack. And, It's one of those nights to just lay in bed with the dogs and just watch uh, like Netflix or something. This guy that we're friends with, his wife works with Alex and we've known them for 10 years and he was like, so he was like now, if, if he was like, if, if I went home with Peter, we could just watch YouTube videos and uh, you know, find weird stuff to watch like aliens and stuff on YouTube because I love to watch all that stuff and he knows that. And Alex is like, you like to just sit there and 
lay in bed and watch YouTube videos. He's like, yeah, I love it. And Alex is like, yeah, I don't relate to that. He goes, see, I'd make a better boyfriend than you make a husband to your own husband. <laughs> I do show Alex like some of the videos and stuff like that. I was actually showing him a video today. I can't remember who it was. I actually was showing this friend of mine that um, his wife worked with Alex too. We used to, back in the day, we would watch Betty Butterfield videos. Do you guys know who she is? Hilarious, right? This guy that would dress up in drag, but he wasn't really a drag queen. And he would do these like really short, you can look them up on YouTube, Betty Butterfield, they're hilarious. And Betty's always like looking for a new church and she goes to all these different kinds of churches. And you'll either think they're hilarious or you'll think this is really bizarre. I don't understand the humor on this at all. But I used to think they're hilarious and he did too. And so we um, would talk about him. Well, he's always looking for like, he was sending me like these memes tonight while we were sitting there. And so I was telling him, I was like, have you ever seen like Chelsea Lynn and her Snapchat things? And she did like, I said, Chelsea Lynn does this character. And then do you guys know who Chelsea Lynn is? Okay. She's hilarious. I think Chelsea Lynn, is that her name? But anyway, if you've never seen her, she's hilarious. And, um, she does like these Snapchat filter things. And then I think her, I can't remember what her, is it Tammy maybe is her, oh my God, these shoes are killing my feet. I was, I think it's Tammy, it's this character that she does, but it's hilarious. But I was telling Tanya, we just switched topics by the way, that I literally could not find my Birkenstock uh, sandals like forever and they were back there underneath like some stuff on the floor. Like I have this like blanket folded over down there and then I have a scarf on top of it because I wanted to bring it in. And I have my sandals underneath it so I'm just going to pick it up and bring all the stuff in there and it's been sitting in there for like three or four days and I couldn't find them. Well, I found them like last night and I brought them inside and now my feet hurt and I don't have those sandals in the car. <laughs> when I could totally just change my sand into sandals right now. Oh well, such is life. I like to get dressed up, but I don't like to wear a tie. It was interesting because the Christmas party, this Christmas party specifically, is usually always very dressy. And there were a couple guys there whose wives have worked with Alex like 10 years, like he has, that, um, you know, they would have like jeans on and like sport coats and like a nice shirt underneath it. Um, but I, you know, they're not super dressy. Years past, we went to a couple different places that were really, really dressy. And, and when it was that dressy, like every, all of like the women and stuff like wore, you know, cocktail dresses and stuff like that. And the men wear like suit jackets and I even did. And I think I wore a tie a couple years. And, um, but this year it was really, uh, like not dressy at all. People were really relaxed in what they wore. I was kind of surprised, honestly. I was laying in bed and I was turned this way and Boo was behind my back so I couldn't really move over and I didn't want him to have to move because I knew he was so comfortable. And you guys ever do this kind of stuff with your dogs? And um, he was, I could tell he was so comfortable because he was like, he like comes right up, he like circles up against my back and then he comes real tight against my back and lays down. And so he had done that, and um, I'm gonna have to turn the defrost on because it's like, oh, there was an accident right here. Um, oh, poor guys. Anyway, um, I, so I didn't want to move because he was like so comfortable, or at least I thought he was. So I just, um, like turned that way, but I kept on like kind of like turning my head the other way. I am so sore all through here right now. It's like my neck is twisted. I can't like when I turn like this, it's like all of this back here hurts me. And um, like it is just really, really in pain. Ugh, like my neck is in knots. I need to get a massage. I used to get massages all the time. Tony and I used to 
go to those places. Um, like, I legit would go to, like, a massage therapist and have them work, like, certain muscle groups. I went to, like, the same person forever, but, um, but Tanya and I sometimes go to, like, those foot massage places, you know, where they do it all over your clothes. I love those, too, and they're only, like, 30 bucks. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? They're totally worth it if you've never been. We always sit there, and then, like, they go out of the room and, like, carry the buckets of water where your feet have been sitting, and, like, you have, like, like these things over your eyes and I'll go, hey Tanya, quit snoring. And she'll be like, I wasn't snoring. And I'm like, yeah, but you're being really loud over there. <laughs> we haven't done that in a long time. She'll text me every once in a while and be like, do you wanna go get a foot massage? And um, I remember the first time I went, she was like trying to explain to me what it, what it was. And I was like, what do you mean it's like a foot massage? And she was like, it's a foot massage, but they do it like all over, they do it over your clothes, like, you know, and um, it's like a full over massage. I'm like, an hour full over massage for $30, there's no way. And actually, I really think it's like worth your money. You guys know what I'm talking about. Do you know what I mean? They're always full when you go in there. There's always like 30 people in there and you walk by these rooms and there's just like five people laying on these beds in a room. It's real peaceful and quiet though. It's really nice. Maybe I'll do that sometime this week. I feel like everywhere I go anymore, there are Ubers everywhere. Like, all, I constantly see the Uber or the Lyft lights in the front of cars when I'm going places. See, like, I can't, it's hurt so bad to turn my neck like that. Oh. The malls were packed today. Apparently Macy's was having some huge sale and I was like, okay, but not on the stuff that I got. <laughs> like, what's that about? Because when I was checking out, I said to the guy, I go, you guys are really busy today. And he was like, um, yeah, it's because of the huge sale. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> but it seemed like people were Christmas shopping. Like they weren't buying stuff for themselves, you know what I mean? You know, you can kind of tell the difference. Ooh. Damn. Hurt so bad. Anyway, let's see what else there is to talk about. <laughs> I don't really have a whole lot else to talk about. Alex and I need to figure out what we're going to do for New Year's. I think we'll probably because we said we were gonna stay in town and save money so that we could go and do Miami the way that we wanna do it and do that trip. Um, so I think that I was gonna actually surprise him and do like three nights in Miami for New Year's until I got online and I started looking at the prices. I think I talked about this one night. It is so expensive to go to Miami for New Year's. And then I thought, well, maybe Vegas we could do. Although, I don't really want to be in some huge nightclub till 5 o'clock in the morning in Vegas. Um, and it's equally as expensive. But Miami is, like, unbelievable. I could not believe it. It's like, you can go to Miami for, like, two, three nights over New Year's for the same price that you would pay for, like, a week in March. I mean, I couldn't believe it was so expensive. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. We're not doing this. Domino's Pizza. But we go to this like big party at this club every year downtown. I think this is like surely the last year that maybe it's gonna be open called the Pavilion. Last year they did, the first year they did Gatsby. And then last year they did, God, I don't even remember what they did last year. There's always a theme. And this year it's Studio 54, which I think will be kind of fun. And um, like we go with like Melissa and Jason and Aaron and Eric, and um, we have a couple other friends that we go through. Like, there's, I think, it, in total, like, eight couples that all go, six or eight couples, we all go together. And we go out to dinner somewhere first, and then um, we get, like, a VIP section, and it's really fun. I don't know what Alex and I did for New Year's before. Oh, we used to go to, so, it's not even called the Chase Tower anymore, but it used to be called the Chase Tower in Indianapolis, and about halfway up, they have this like uh, pavilion ballroom that's like outside. It was a, 
rock vodka party that we would go to every year. And that was like when we were doing the website and stuff and we would go and they would give us a VIP section and um, a lot of our friends DJ'd for that. And then we also went to, I can't remember what the other one was called. We, a couple years ago, I think the first year I may have started this vlog, yeah, we didn't go to the Gatsby party. Our friends, Melissa and everybody went to that and we went to the Ciroc party and we took Alex's whole family. I think I vlogged that year. I did, that was like my very first vlog I ever did on this channel. If you go back and watch that very first vlog and um, in the beginning of it, I show like Alex's, was Alex's mom in that? No. No. Because Alex's stepdad had flown into town because his son had passed away. That was that, like, between Christmas and New Year's was so sad. So they were down, they were staying downtown. And, um, then, but it was like Alex's grandma even went with us to this, like, big, like, dance party thing. It was really fun. And we had a little section and they all danced all night long. And, Alex's aunt Jackie and Uncle Ed went with us and I think Maya might have even been here from Las Vegas and Nina was here I think from yeah they were all on it and Fufu and Jesse were here and um, it was really fun my foot is itching me Do you guys want to see these shoes aren't they cool Very cool. Very painful. Fashion is pain. <laughs> no. <sighs> like a big little party bus thing going on there. Looks like something. I remember years ago, we had a friend of ours, and she had her 40th birthday party, and we're really good friends with she and her husband. And she wanted to get a big party bus and like go to all these clubs. They went like all over. They went to like some, what do you call it? I, I don't know how to explain it to you guys, but it's a, um, it's a country music bar, that's what it is. And um, in fact, I like it, it's actually a lot of fun. We never go there though, it's called Saddle Up. And, would saddle up. We, they stopped at like six places and then they ended at a strip club. <laughs> well, I didn't know how much of the night that I was going to be able to handle. I was like, at what point am I going to want to leave this thing? So, but she really wanted me to go. She was like, I really, really want you to go. And I was like, okay. But like, and this is before like the whole Uber. God, how long ago would this have been? Well, it was before Ubers existed. And, and I don't like being stuck places anyway. And one of the first things I learned when I got sober was that if I drive places that I can leave whenever I want to leave. Like it was really hard for me not to have a car for my first like, you know, six months or whatever, because um, I like to be in control of when I leave a situation. I don't like to be in situations where I can't get out of and I'm stuck. And um, so she really wanted me to go though. She's like, I, do you have a problem? Is it the bars? I was like, it's not the bars. I just don't want to be stuck on a party bus that I can't get off of if I don't want to get off of. And she's like, well, you could meet us at some of these places. And I go, okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. Cause they were going to have like, you know, the party was going to start at their house and I, and then the party bus was going to pick everybody up from there. Right. And then the party bus was actually going to drop people off on the way home, like at their houses. Cause everybody lived within, let's say like a, you know, 10 mile radius. And so they just paid the service to like drop everybody off. So it was like real safe. So I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I said, I'll just come to the party at your house. Okay, listen to what insanity this is. I don't even know what I was thinking. I am so different today than I was then. I still, I still would have gone to the party, but I think what I would have done is I would have said like, I'm gonna go to one or two places and then I'm gonna go home. Like I'll, I'll meet you guys at, you know, the one bar saddle up and then I'll go to one other bar. But after that, like, I think I'm gonna go home. You know what I mean? So, um, I said, I'll meet you at your house and then when the party bus comes to pick you guys up, I will, um, I'll follow the party bus. 
And she's like, do you really want to do that? And I was like, yeah, it'll be fine. I'll just follow the party bus. And then if anybody wants to go home early, I can take them home early. And then I'm not stuck out and I can do whatever. Well, I did the duration of this night. Let me just tell you, okay? And it was, whoo, it was a lot. And um, I will say, I was, I'm glad I was on the party bus. People were vomiting and it was craziness. And there was like 30 people on this party bus. And um, finally, I just like had had enough. We walked into that strip club at the end and I was like, okay, I'm ready to go. <laughs> like, this is enough already. And I stayed for about five minutes and then I left. And then I had to take home this woman who, God, I haven't seen her probably since that party. I love this chapstick. I don't even know what it is. This lip, lip balm. Silky lips. But find the person at a party, okay, that is drunk, emotional, and crying, and they will leech onto me. <laughs> True story. True story. Oh my God, I love you so much. You're such a good listener. <laughs> oh, thank you. Can I tell you how bad I want to throw, I want to eat this popcorn right here now that I said that I didn't love, but now I want kind of. It was interesting. Somebody said in the comment of my review video, so today, I reviewed this Cracker Jack Holiday Sugar Cookie Popcorn. It looks absolutely delicious on the outside, okay? You see? And, um, so somebody commented on it, because I didn't love it. You can go watch the review channel. It's not bad, but I didn't love it. It didn't, like, knock my, knock my, it didn't knock my socks off. But anyway, um, somebody was like, uh, Oh my God, I loved it. I ate the bag really, really quick and we thought it tasted just like Fruit Loops. Okay, this is what's so funny to me is that so many things that I have like reviewed, people have said they think that it tastes like Fruit Loops. Like the Witch's Brew from Starbucks, people said they thought that tasted like Fruit Loops. And I'm like, I didn't realize that Fruit Loops was such a common taste. Maybe I need to go have them. Is it the marshmallows in Fruit Loops that they taste like? Cause I don't like, I don't know, like maybe I need to go check out Fruit Loops and I haven't had them in a while, and so maybe I just don't remember what Fruit Loops taste like. Do you know what I mean? So, Alex works with this girl that lives in Zionsville. Zionsville is the town that I always drive through that has like the brick streets and stuff like that, the cobblestone streets, it's adorable. And she lives like if, if this is Main Street, she lives like in, like right off of Main Street somewhere in those houses that I adore. And so she told me tonight where she lives because I was like, I drive through there all the time. She goes, you drive through there all the time and vlog? And I said, yeah. And she said, oh my God, I didn't know that. And um, so I was like, I asked her where she lives and she told me where she lives. I'm like, I'm going to find your house tonight. She's like, well, okay. <laughs> She's like, feel comfortable to stop by anytime you want. I was like, are you serious? She's like, yeah. I go, do you go to Scoops? Because Scoops is like this ice cream place. I've never been there, but I drive by it every time I vlog and I want to go there. And she's like, yeah, we go to Scoop. She goes, it's Scoop. And I go, oh. She goes, yeah, we go to the Scoop sometime. It's not the Scoop, but it really is called the Scoop. I call it Scoops. <laughs> I've never been there, so I don't know why I call it anything. But it, it's like this little local ice cream shop, and it looks adorable. And, um... Yeah, so. <laughs> the scoop. My friend Valerie has this psychic medium that she wants me to go to. And she keeps on telling me about her. And she's like, you've got to go to her. She is so, like, exact on the stuff that she says. And I'm like, okay. She's like, no, but seriously, I am. I'm like, okay, I need to go to that person then and listen to what she has to say to me and all that kind of stuff. Because I need a psychic reading of the world. I want to, I don't want to know what's coming. Okay, I turned it off. Um... But yeah, I really want to, I haven't been to like a legit psychic medium in a 
why out well Teresa Caputo um, you can just call that what you want but um, Melissa and I did the one at New Age People Crystal and that wasn't didn't feel very legit to me at all and so other than that I can't remember the last time I went to the old lady out in the middle of nowhere that was yelling at her granddaughter that she wouldn't get a toy if she didn't pipe down. She was expensive too. She was like $200. And she's supposedly like the best in the state. She didn't get one thing right. In fact, she taped the whole thing and I had it like behind my seat of my car for a long time and I like one day I found it, I just pitched it in the trash. And I was like, I don't, I don't need to listen to that. <laughs> I want to go to like a medium or a psychic that is like so on point about stuff like that's what I want to do somebody actually did like a psychic reading not a psychic reading a tarot card reading of like me on YouTube I don't remember what the person's name was but I was like Tanya saw it and she called me and she's like, you gotta watch this like tarot card reading of you. And some of it was like way off, but some of it was like kind of like right on point. It was kind of like a little bit like, I mean, it was probably things that if you watched a lot of my videos, you could like ascertain. But I think she even said like in the beginning of the video that she doesn't really watch my videos. Um, it was interesting, you know, it was interesting to see an unsolicited tarot card reading about me. I didn't mind it. I thought it, you know, it was, it was cool. It was kind of fun to watch. And I was like, this is interesting, you know. She didn't say anything in the video that, you know, I haven't alluded to in vlogs or... That's the thing is I put so much out there that, like, anybody could probably, you know, watch my stuff and figure out, like... I think they could, like, you know what I mean? It wouldn't be hard to do a reading on me. stuff or something and put it on my neck tonight when I sleep. But I think that stuff stinks so bad. It's over there. Tony put something some trash on the side. Alex goes to a chiropractor and he swears by it, but it scares the hell out of me. He's like, I love when they crack my neck really good. And I'm like, ugh. Tani goes to a chiropractor too and she swears by him. I just, I don't know that I can, uh, I don't know it scares me. Even just the word an adjustment scares me, like a body adjustment. I don't know why that freaks me out, but it does. I know a lot of people totally swear by chiropractors, but I'm just like, there's something about it that just kind of scares me. It makes me nervous, I don't know why. I keep on turning the heat on and then I get real hot in here because I have this on and then I have a t-shirt underneath it. Not to mention it's on almost 60 degrees outside, but. <sighs> have you guys got your Christmas trees up yet? I haven't done it and I keep on saying I'm gonna do it. I was gonna maybe do it this weekend, but today went by so fast and then tomorrow I have the live stream for the book club, so I won't be doing it tomorrow. And, um, cause that'll take up the better part of my afternoon. And so then, um, I mean, I guess I could do it after that, but I probably won't be in the mood. I'll probably just want to hang out with Alex. And then, um, I got some things to do on Monday. So probably Monday or Tuesday is like the soonest I'll do it. I'll have to ask Alex if he wants to help decorate the house. Cause when I carved the pumpkin for my review channel, he was like, I can't believe that you didn't ask me to do that. Like, I want to do cute, fun stuff like that with you. And I was like, okay. I said, I honestly didn't think that you'd want to do it. So, he was like, yeah, I want to do like all that kind of cute stuff. And I said, okay. So, I'll ask him if he wants to trim the tray with me. <laughs> the three foot. It's not even three feet, I bet. It's two, two and a half feet tree. <laughs> you want to, it'll take us about five minutes. You can just hang a couple ornaments. It's a pretty tree, though. It's like flocked and it looks very natural. Well, I bought it at Menards last year. It was super cheap. It was like 20 something dollars. I, if even that, I don't even know how much it was. It was cheap though. 
But I want to get it up so I can have the lights on when it's like dark at night. And we're watching like movies, Christmas movies. It'll be so much fun. We had tornado warnings in Indianapolis tonight. I can't even believe it. And then my friend, we were like, well, the news was on in the background at this restaurant that we were at. And he was like, we have tornado warnings right now. And I was like, really? And I was like, do we get tornadoes in, um, in December? And he was like, yeah. He was like, our house was hit by a tornado on like the 23rd of December a couple years ago. I go, really? And he was like, yeah, it was horrible. Don't you remember that? And I said, no, I sure don't. Only thing I know weather-wise that close to Christmas is whether or not we're having a white Christmas or not. And if we're not, I'm pissed. But it's lightning right now. We'll probably have another downpour here in just a little bit. It feels very much like spring outside. I wanted to go to the mall today. Well, I went to the mall, but I wanted to go to this other mall today where Saks is, because they have a whole Chanel section there. And, um, because I have the, oh, do I still have it in here? I better still have it in here. I don't know where I put it. Oh, it's right here. I have this $50 um, dollar gift card from Saks because I'm buying my other cologne. So I wanted to buy this Chanel Blue. But then I also wanted to look at this like Chanel men's line that they have. It's like a concealer or a face scrub and like a lip balm and one other an eyebrow pencil and like a shaper. And, but then I was like, I was gonna go over there and like it's expensive stuff. Like the eyebrow pencil is like $45. I mean, maybe this isn't expensive to you guys, but I think it's expensive. It's like $45. Like the face cleanser, which is like a small bottle, is like $45. The concealer's like $65 and the lip balm's $38. So it's like basically like $200 worth of like four skincare products, right? Which I think is extremely expensive for four products for a man or for a woman. I think it's expensive. But I know that Chanel is, you know, upscale beauty products, but I don't know if they work very well. I don't know how they work in comparison to other stuff. So I was thinking about it tonight and I was like, well, why don't I just buy lower end stuff? And then I was like, am I really gonna like start doing all this? Like Peter, really? I mean, that is really not, I mean, as much as I think it would be fun to do, like, you know, to go out every once in a while and see how I feel with it, I'm like really not that person, if that makes sense. Like, I just am not, you know? Oh, look, they have like a little Santa booth here. You, you guys wanna see? Here, see? You can go in here and you can see Santa right there on the street. How cute is that? I don't think he's in there right now, though. But, um, <laughs> um, oh, Martina McBride singing Silent Night in the background. See, I did have the Christmas music on. But I thought like instead, maybe I would buy like, I want like, I, I've asked so many of my friends and every time I say like, you know, like a mascara brush, but it's not a mascara brush because it doesn't have mascara on it. It's just like the brush part. And they're like, oh, a spoolie. I'm like, is that what it's called? And they're like, yeah. So I'm like, okay, that. And they're like, well, you can get those at Sephora for really cheap. So I'm like, okay, I could get that. And I don't need an eyebrow pencil because I probably won't wear or use an eyebrow pencil. I'll just like, you know, sh brush them up and, you know, trim them and whatever. And then I was like, I could probably buy a really cheap concealer to see if I even want to try it. 
and then I already have like three different face washes I'm watching you watching I already have like three different face washes I'm using so I don't really need another face wash and then oh primer that's the other thing that they have and it's basically just a face cream and so I'm like well I don't really need a face cream either because I've got lotions galore at home you know and Elle just sent me from Elle Leary Artistry I love her so much hey Elle she watches all my vlogs she's so sweet um, so I don't need any more face cream so I was like this is stupid for me to go in there and buy these products like if it was something that I used all the time and then to invest some money in that but I don't know that I really want to invest some money if I don't have it right now, if that makes sense. Like, that just seems stupid to me, you know what I mean? So, I don't think I'm gonna do that. Like, I might do it later, but... Not right now. I should probably start heading home because I'm going to have to go to the bathroom here in a little bit. I can feel it. <laughs> Why didn't your vlog go long? Well, because I had to go to the bathroom. So if you guys know like a good concealer that you like that's not too expensive, let me know. I don't even know how to use it. <laughs> oh, I think there's a foundation too. So maybe it's five products. It's interesting though. They have like these videos on the Chanel website of like how to use these products like for men that don't know but they want to use the products. And they make it look so easy. And I'm like, you know that I'm going to use this stuff and I'm going to look like an absolute buffoon. I'm not going to have any idea how to use it. Whatever. Or maybe not. Maybe I'll figure it out, you know. Hell, half the beauty gurus that are out there right now are self-taught, you know, teenagers that are, like, so incredible. They're, like, hardly out of, like, junior high. And they're, like, millions of followers. And they're, like, doing these. And they're all self-taught. But don't you think kids learn stuff quicker than adults do? Like... Like, my nephews, like, this is totally not the same as that, but, like, my nephews, like, they are on their tablets all the time. Like, my nephew Sebastian is three years old, and he is, like, constantly on his tablet, like, looking at videos and pulling up new... I'm like, he is three years old, okay? And he totally knows how to do all this stuff with the tablet. I'm like, that is crazy. <laughs> like... Like, if my mom was still alive, I would have to, like, teach her how to do the tablet. You know what I mean? Because she would totally not understand it. <laughs> She'd be like, I don't understand what this one does. And I don't understand. I'd be like, Mom, <laughs> just listen to me, please. But I think some of the technological stuff is, you know, weird. And I think the other thing is, like, I don't know if you grew up in, like, if you grew up in my generation, you'll understand what I'm saying. Like... Like, computers, typewriters, stereos, things like that back in the day. The answering machines. You know, like, if you recorded a message on an answering machine, let's say, okay? And then you, like, deleted it, there was no getting it back, okay? So, like, mistakes that we made learning things were permanent mistakes. Like, there was, you couldn't get back what you had done. Well, we don't necessarily live in that generation anymore, you know? It's like... A kid screws up a tablet, reset the tablet. You know what I mean? It's not like you're going to destroy the tablet forever. I mean, yes, some things you do will probably destroy the tablet, but the tablet won't be destroyed forever. Well, I think in my head, like, because whenever I'll say something to Alex, like, about something with the computer, for example, and he'll be like, well, you just need to do this, this, and this. I'm like, well, I didn't want to do that because I didn't know if I was going to mess up the computer. And he'll be like, Peter, you literally can't mess up the computer. Like, you, you know just because you do something like this in iMovie editing a video, like, you can get the video back, you know what I mean? And I'm like, no, I don't. Like, it, isn't it gone for good? He's like, no, you can get some of that back. And, and like, I don't. And he's like, and if you back it up, and if you do this, and whatever. And I just don't think I think that way. I think, like, because of my age, 
And I think that I technologically think that you can ruin things permanently, which that's not how the younger generation is being raised. They're being raised that nothing is, is permanently damaged technologically. So I think like for the older generation, like myself probably and going, I mean, I know there's a lot of people my age that are completely tech savvy. My dad is very, very tech savvy. And my uncle is very tech savvy. Um, but like my aunt didn't even know how to answer emails and Caroline answered all her emails for her, you know? But um, is there a train coming? Could that even be? This is a train. I don't remember there ever being a train here. Let me see what's going on. Or is it just flashing yellow lights? I think it's just flashing yellow lights. Yeah, it's just the lights are flashing. But, um, so I think like, because I've talked to friends of mine and they're very similar to me. There's like a fear associated with technology. You know, and I know for my mom, it like really kind of shut her down because she's like, I'm so far, like, I don't even know how I would start learning this stuff now. Like when she was sick, before she went to the hospital, my mom had a cell phone that my aunt had bought for her and she would keep it charged across the room, like plugged in so that she wouldn't use it. And anytime you went anywhere near that phone, my mom would say, don't touch my phone, leave it plugged in. And I'd be like, it's fine, mom, like the battery's charged. And she's like, I want it fully charged so that if I need it in case of an emergency, the only reason I have it, she never used it. She like almost never used a cell phone. She's like, the only reason that I have it is for emergencies. And she was like, and I want it completely charged. And I'm like, you do realize you don't have to keep it plugged into the wall 24 hours a day. I know, but I want it completely charged. And um, she would call it a cellular device. And she would say, she said cell phone, and she would say it like really funny. She would say like, have you seen my, my cell phone? <laughs> it was, I don't know how she said it, but I would laugh. It was so funny, it was cute. But she was panicked about that kind of stuff, you know, that like, you know, and I think like stereo systems used to be like that back in the day. I remember my mom had this amazing stereo system. I mean, the sound was incredible, right? That, um, but it was like, push this button down, this button up, this button down, this button down, this button up. Do you remember that? Okay, and then she would have like a key written out about which buttons had to be pushed which way to listen to what. And she like had these notes in a drawer underneath the stereo, like the entire time that she had the stereo. And when my parents got separated, that was like one of the things that my dad taught my mom was like how to wear to put these buttons and how, you know, so you could play phono, phono for like the, you know, album and tape cassette and all this kind of stuff. Do you guys remember all these kind of big deal stereos? I'm kind of surprised those haven't come back a little bit, but my mom would keep those, um, you know, directions in this drawer underneath the stereo. And then every time, like, she wanted to play a record or whatever, she'd have it kind of set already. But if she didn't, she'd, like, pull out those directors and she'd, or directions and she'd have her, like, readers on and she would, like, you know, she wore bifocals. I, th I think those were, weren't they readers? I said that on here not too long ago. I don't know. But she wore those big bifocals that were split in the middle. And she'd have them on and down low and she'd be, like, reading the directions and whatever. And I'd be like, Mom, it's already set. She'd be like, don't. I have to learn this because if I don't learn it, then I won't ever know how to do it on my own. And I'd be like, um, you've literally had the stereo for 30 years, okay? And if you don't know how to do it by now, you will never know how to do it. But now, as I get older, I'm very similar to that. I'm like very similar to not really knowing like the procedures of how stuff works and it makes me kind of nervous. It's like, well, if I don't know how to do this and I don't want to do it because if I do it and then I do it wrong, then I'm going to make a huge mistake and I don't want to do that. Do you guys know what I mean? Like, I think there's some fear associated with technology for like my generation. But then I know a lot of people, I mean, obviously let's just be for real. Bill Gates is older than me, you know, and Steve Jobs was older than me and they're the ones that like invented all this shit. So I can't use age as an excuse, but I do think that, you know, it's interesting like when you read, like, like I think it was the book Blank when it talked about, um, I can think of if you clocked in like something like 20,000 hours doing something, then basically you're an expert at it, right? Well, the class that Bill Gates, I think it was Bill Gates was in, 
Like they were one of these like experimental classes. I could be getting this story completely wrong, you guys. It could be somebody else, but I think it's Bill Gates. And um, my dad and I had this long conversation about this one time because he loves that book blank. And I've never read it. I've read excerpts of it and Alex has it. It's been sitting next to his bed forever, dusty. But anyway, um, I think my dad may have even given it to him. But this idea that if you do something every day or if you like do, do something for 20,000 hours or more in your life, then basically you're an expert at it, right? Well, Bill Gates, I think it was him or Steve Jobs, I'm not sure, but they were like in this experimental class of like at a school that like they were the first ones that had computers. So they basically grew up on computers. Well, I did not. And I can literally remember my computer lab in high school, like my junior and senior year. And we would have like two computers in there. And you had to like, a, like reserve time to go to the computer lab. And the only reason we would ever go to the computer lab was not to like do anything. It was like, you know, to like write a paper or something. You wouldn't go there for that. Now in college I did, but it was like, you would have to go there to like, it's just stupid stuff because they wanted you to get acquainted with the computer lab and how it all worked and stuff like that. Well, it just, it seemed so out there to me. I didn't understand any of it. And I was, you know, kind of like afraid of all of it. And, um, and I didn't even have a computer in college. Like I had this like typewriter word processor thing and I had, or in high school. And then I had that until like my first or second year of college. And then I finally got a computer and I like one of those big, huge computers. And um, I didn't get a laptop till shoot. I don't even, <sighs> okay, my ex and I, we still had one of those big computers. And so he and I broke up in 2007 and I had a laptop by then. So I didn't even have a laptop till 2005, 2006. And it was like a huge laptop, like a really heavy one. And I got a Mac being on, uh, being on YouTube before I used one of those little, like I, I just bought one to write on and I you know, like still haven't you know used it yet because I've been writing on my Mac and like transferring stuff and I need to do it. But um, one of those little HP notebooks, like I wrote my whole book on that. I, my first year of YouTube, I did everything on that notebook and um, which just proves that you don't need a lot. Of course, the quality of my videos was shit and I see people do better things on their phone than I did on that little notebook. But, um, I just haven't been like real tech savvy. Alex is somebody that like he wants the newest thing when it comes out. He wants the newest phone and you know he wants the newest computer and I'm like oh my god and I you know I have so many friends of mine that are like that and they spend so much money and I'm like I don't really need the newest of all of this. I just really don't like um Like we were up for an upgrade with our phones. I don't even know what this is, a 10 or an X, or I don't even know what it is. But like, I didn't even really need a new phone. Like my phone was fine and we were up for an upgrade and Alex really wanted to get it. So we went in there and um, they cut us some kind of deal. So we got it, some kind of deal my ass. You know, you're paying for the phone, which is like such an expensive phone. These phones are so expensive to me. And what kills me is, that, you know, like, and I'm so careful with my phone because, you know, or I try to be careful with my phone because, you know, it's like, um, there's not like these, what do you call it, insurance on them, or most of them don't have it, and I don't think we have it, right? So it's like, if you screw up your phone, you have to pay the full price for a phone, which like, this phone is like ridiculous. God, I was at the end of the little recording thing there. Okay, so anyway, I didn't realize I'd gone that long. Um, I was talking about the expense of a phone. I mean, they're like $1,100, they're so expensive, you know, and we didn't pay it up front. We paid it like over a course of time, right? But it's still so expensive. It's like a computer. And realistically, your phone is like a computer. And I guess, you know, like I could do a lot more on it than I do. I just don't do a whole lot on it. Alex does. Alex does like so much, but I don't really, and that's the thing, I just don't understand how to do a lot of stuff, you know what I mean? Like from my phone.
I mean, I've seen people make like whole intros and do such cool stuff on like iMovie on your phone and like there's all these movie apps. And I'm like, how do you do that? Like seriously, they edit whole videos on their phone and I'm like, and they're just like, Ch -ch 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 -ch. I'm like, oh my God. Like, I don't even understand how you're doing that. And I had somebody teach me, well, it was my friend Erin, her daughter is in high school and I was like, uh, can you show me how to do all this? And she's like, yeah, you do this and you do this. And she like made this like really cool video that was like a three minute video. And just for fun, I mean, she was just doing it to show me. And I mean, it took her like maybe 10 minutes to make this video and she had like things going across. I was like, oh my God, how did you do that? She's like, it's so easy. And I go, yeah, cause you've been doing it since you were five. Like, I don't understand how to do any of that stuff. Please don't turn off. So I don't know. I guess my number one favorite, my favorite, my number one biggest fear is sharks. My number two biggest fear is technology, maybe. It is scary to me though, because I just don't have a clue, you know, what I'm doing half the time. So, not scary necessarily, just, I don't know. And then Alex is always like, well, you could teach yourself and then you wouldn't be afraid. Like sometimes I, he thinks I choose to just like not know how to do it. And, but like I do very well if somebody shows me what to do, but like if I don't have anybody to show me how to do it, like I have no clue what I'm doing, if that makes sense. But if some, once somebody shows me, like I can figure it out. And um, so, yeah. being single, you know, for a while really helped me with that though because I didn't really have anybody to lean on for that stuff except for like my dad and I do call my dad some stuff for, for technological stuff. But my dad's answer to a lot of things too is you need to take it to the Apple store and I, I'm like, oh, the dreaded Apple store. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to do that. Like I don't want to go into the Apple store. Every time Alex takes something in there, he's in there for like three or four hours. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> it's not even worth it to me. And then I understand like my friends who have like the money to blow that why they just go buy a new computer or a new phone because they don't want to stand in line at the damn Apple store, you know? And then you go in there and then you have to like, is it like you have to make an appointment to go before you go in there and then you have to wait and then it's always like 40 minutes longer than your appointment time anyway? I couldn't stand working in the Apple store. I don't know how those people do it in there because it is just like constant. Like you would never just like walk in the Apple store and be like, today's going to be an easy day. You know what I mean? Like you would never go to work. If you work at the Apple store, let me know if that's the case, okay? Because I think that would be interesting to know. Like I bet people that work at the Apple store, they never walk into work. Like today's going to be so easy. Nobody's going to come into work. You just know that once you walked into work, your day would be like total hell. You know what I mean? <laughs> I've actually known a couple people that worked at the Apple store that loved it. That really... But those are people that like puzzles and shit like that. And they like to, I mean, I don't dislike a good puzzle, but I like the ones with the big pieces. You know what I mean? Like, they're the ones that like to figure stuff out. And, like, if something's broken, they love to, like, you know, try to figure it out and why it's not working and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, can you just fix it for me? Like, I just, like, you know what I mean? Like, I just don't, I don't have the tolerance for stuff like that. I'm very, like, I lack patience with shit that I don't understand. And, um... Like, I can be the most patient person in the world teaching somebody to do something that I know how to do, but when it comes to somebody trying to teach me and, like, I feel stupid doing it, like, I don't have any patience for it. I'm just like, I'm not going to learn this. I'm stupid and whatever, you know? Because I do feel real dumb with some of that stuff. Do you guys, are, is, is there anybody else out there that feels the same way as me? Do you feel stupid with some of this stuff today? It's just like, like, I'm trying to think of something that, like, I specifically... I mean, it is so dumb, okay? Like, let me just give you an example. This will show you how stupid I am. Like, you know when you're, like, looking on a package to, like, microwave something, it'll say, depending on the wattage of your microwave, I have no idea how many watts my microwave has, but I can tell you that the next time that I buy a microwave, that will be one thing that I know. Because I have never known how many watts my microwave has, and I hate on the back of a package when it says, if it's this many watts, do it for this many minutes. If it's this many watts, I'm like, I don't know how many watts. Is there a place I can look at that on my microwave? You guys are all like, yes, it's underneath there on a sticker, probably. 
probably, and I've just been too lazy to look, right? <laughs> but that is just one small example of how I feel stupid about things that happen in the world. I just really don't understand a lot of it, you know? And then there are things that I understand, like, on a deep level, but it's just not technological stuff like that. I don't understand a lot of that stuff, and that's okay. Yes, Peter, we get that you're an idiot. <laughs> and that is okay. <sighs> My head is starting to hurt again. And it stopped for a while when I was at the, like, the tail end of the party. I've had like this kind of like throbbing migraine all day. The, earlier today, it was horrible when it was like pouring down rain. And then like the Christmas party, the holiday party, it wasn't too bad, but it still hurt. And now it's kind of coming back again. And I'm like, is it going to start, like, pouring down, thunderstorming again? Because that's usually when my head hurts. Oh, I hope not. You know, one of the things that my trainer said that I could have on my diet that would be healthy for me is cream cheese sushi. Do you think that's interesting that he said that? I'm like, that's interesting. He was like looking up different foods that were like health, like meals that I could have that were like, that match the stuff that I need to do. And one of them was cream cheese sushi. And I was like, cause he knows I'm a vegetarian. I thought that was interesting. I like cream cheese sushi, so that's great, you know? when I walk through the door. It's not even that late and all these like restaurants, it's 1228 and all these restaurants are closed that you would think on a Saturday night, like not that I think the restaurants would be open till like 1230 at night or one. Uh, I was adjusting the camera by accident. Anyway, it surprises me that a lot of these restaurants um, on a Saturday night aren't open later. You know, like I'm looking at the steakhouse right now and I'm like, they have like a really beautiful bar inside and I'm like, well, isn't your bar open till like one o'clock or something like that? But that's interesting to me that it's not, they're not still open. I mean, it's dead, the parking lot is empty. And this steakhouse over here is too. I wonder how late steakhouses are open on weekends. Well, probably if they're open that late, they have to serve, and so they don't wanna be open that late, right? But now I'm coming up here over like next to like two bar restaurants, and I bet you they're still packed and open. Let's see. Yep, yep, absolutely packed, both of them. But I think they're both open to like two or three in the morning because they're considered like bar bars. I don't mind doing that if it's loungy. I just don't like to do it for five and a half hours. Like I had fun at the holiday party, but it was a little long. Gas has been pretty cheap here lately. It's like 219 at Thornton's and I also have a little card so I get three cents off there. So what is that 316 or 216? For a gallon of gas, that's pretty cheap, don't you think? For Christmas, like for uh, December, like isn't it usually like a, isn't this more expensive? I feel like how long ago was it that we was like three fifty for a gallon of gas? Was that this summer? It feels like it was just not too long ago, you know. Over there. Well, 
listen, you guys, I'm gonna get off here and I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna let the little puppy dogs out. I'm gonna change out of this outfit, put something comfy on and uh, see what's going on with my husband. He may be home by now, but I'm kind of surprised he would have probably called me if he was home by now. But anyway, see what's going on with him. And then I will be back tomorrow. Um, I hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend, a wonderful Sunday. If this vlog is up in time for you to make it to my live stream, it will be at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're talking about Franny and Zoe. Um, and it's on my you now, which is linked below. So please come check it out. We're just talking about the book. It's real laid back. It's, you know, fun. So anyway, um, I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.